Hi there, Chris here, another quick tip for you all. In this video, we are gonna continue our look at painting the Soviet Hein from the Team Yankee game system. And so as you can see here, we have the model already camouflaged and the belly done, and so now we are gonna work on the canopy, in other words, the glass that is on this model. For that, we're gonna get started with some Abaddon black, but any pure black that you have will do. We're basically just gonna fill in these little side panel windows that are in the little side doors here. And of course, there's other little areas that could be uh, given a base coat of black, such as the intakes on the uh, on the uh, sides of the uh, helicopter, as well as uh, a few other little points. I think the uh, rear rotor blades need to be done in black. So when you have the black out, you can simply just uh, you know hit those other areas as well. And of course, we've thinned the paint down just very slightly with the dampness of the brush. Uh, when I mentioned the dampness of the brush, I always mean just the residual water that is left from rinsing it off. And as you can see here, once the uh, glass has all been painted in, we're going to come in with some Incubi darkness. Now, this is basically a combination of Sotek Green and Abaddon Black. Essentially, when you mix them, kind of like in a uh, one to one mix ratio, maybe a little bit more than a one to one, more like a one black to two ink or a two Sotek Green kind of thing. So, if you need to make your own, but otherwise, that's why I really like using this color is that I like to highlight blacks uh, with uh, a turquoise color. And of course, Incubi Darkness is just a fast track to that. You can see here, I'm simply laying in uh, the color on the bottom portion of the glass. And then, of course, I'll take it and I'll thin it out just a little bit like a glaze, uh, just so I can get a slight transition going on from the uh, uppermost portions of the glass panel down towards where we're going to build up the color the deepest. And you can see on the little side panels here, we simply just come in with our thinned out little glaze here and allow the color to build up on the bottom portion of the glass. And of course, I come back to where we initially done, and I just lay a little bit more of the color down. Uh, again, just to create a little bit more of a transition in that area, just so it's not a stark jump from the black to the Incubi Darkness. I want just a slight little transition in there. That's really going to help sell the effect that we're dealing with a translucent surface here. And again, for anybody who's uh, familiar with any kind of uh, doing translucents like gemstones or anything like that, essentially we're following the same kind of thing here. Next is Stegadon Scale Green. Again, I've started off with this as a bit of breaking it down to a glaze, and I'm just allowing it to build up uh, on the bottom portion of the uh, transition. Now, I'm starting off each brush stroke pretty much where the uh, Incubite Darkness is, but I'm allowing more of that color to build up at the bottom. Again, so that's going to give us a bit of a transition through the Incubite Darkness into the Stegadon Scale Green. And of course, once that is set, we're going to come in with just pure Stegadon Scale Green, and we're going to lay that in in the bottom portions. And again, with the little windows there, it's a little bit trickier because they're so much smaller. But again, you just be very, very careful. You can see here I'm using an artificial brush, which is a fine, fine detail brush. And I think you really want to stick with that when you're doing these little small little details here. And you can see here I'm simply just picking out the bottom portions of the canopies now with the pure st uh, Stegadon Green. And you can see we're just simply building that color up. And again, I'm kind of building up uh, towards the uh, outer edges of the rim as well. Again, don't worry if you haven't built up that transition at that point. Uh, again, because we're kind of going for really a, a stylized look here. So uh, don't worry if you haven't uh, made a transition in those points either. It'll, it'll all play out nicely in the end. Thunderhawk Blue is next. This is going to be our next little highlight color. And basically, we got, again, we're just simply using the dampness of the brush. I'm not using any mediums or anything like that to thin these colors out. And you can see it's a very slight highlight that we're building up. And really what I'm doing is uh, I'm trying to use the horizon line on the model itself where we had previously masked off for the sky blue color in the belly. And I'm basically using that as my horizon line. And of course, then I'm following it up where there's a sharp curvature at the top of the canopy. And I'm putting a stark highlight in that point as well you can see there where I'm drawing a line right across and that's pretty much the uppermost portion that's where the glass kind of curves up really abruptly on those surfaces and you uh, you would end up with a uh, stark highlight in those areas now and typically whenever we're doing like a gem effect uh, we leave that kind of deep that kind of effect uh, for the white paint when we put the little dots up there but because this is like a glass canopy and we're also dealing in kind of a smaller scale here where we just want the hint that this is a translucent surface that we can kind of see and maybe it's a tinted glass or you know what have you right we just want to uh, create a, the illusion of depth in that area 
And so again, we're going to use those little streaks of light uh, just to give that illusion uh, that it is a smooth and translucent surface. Next is rust gray, and this is going to be our uh, next highlight color. And basically, we're just going to follow through just where we had created that uh, that uh, highlight on the very top portion of the glass. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like a little streak, and then I'm going to do a couple little tiny little dots again, just to kind of visual interest, just to break up the fact that it's not just simply a straight line, but in fact, it's a bit of a highlight in the way the glass plays, and you know, a little the in surrounding environment and things of that nature. And so you can see there, I just do like a little streak, and then throw like a little. A uh, couple little dots, and again, it's it's basically like creating the horizon line. Essentially, is what I'm doing there, and so I do it on the front panels of the glass as well, and then of course the big parts of the canopy as well get that treatment. As you can see, we just simply go around and just follow through with that, and again, it gives us that illusion of the uh, kind of like the translucent glass. Uh, you know, again, we could follow it up with white, but I really didn't need, feel it necessary to come back in with an even starker color uh, because, again, we're going to treat this a little bit different here. Now, you could end it there and just leave the color as is, seal the model, and be done. But we're going to come in with some art coat. And basically, we're going to slap that onto the palette, and we're going to use our uh, standard brush here. And basically, we're just going to apply this right into the glass areas themselves. And what I like to do with the art coat is I like to lay down one kind of semi-heavy layer. I mean, it's thinned out just a little bit with the dampness of the brush. But otherwise, uh, I like to apply it uh, in one kind of heavier co type coat. And then to finish it off, I'll thin it out just like here. You'll see here where it looks really quite milky. And that's because I've added just a bit of water to it. And what that allows me to do is uh, follow it through and while it dries, it'll dry with a bit more of a flatter surface and a bit more of a glassy like. And of course, you can continue to build that up until you hit very smooth glassy. But I, this is only going to do two coats just to show the example here. But that's the canopy on a Soviet hind. It's as easy as that. Do not be afraid to give it a try. Unless you're scared of Soviet hinds. Well, I hope you found that quick tip useful and informative. You can watch another quick tip today on miniwargaming.com's vault. Just click on the link in the video description below to watch it right now. If you're not already a vault member, you can sign up for a free seven day trial. Be sure to sign up for the silver membership and that will give you instant access to over a thousand painting tutorials already in our vault. And again, thank you for watching, commenting and subscribing and happy wargaming.